Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. That's right, a video is posted on Saturday. So what does that mean? Crime Talk Weekly Recap, where we bring you all of the top stories throughout the week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Crime Talk. Chad Daybell's children speak. And what have they got to say? Well, their father was framed. Chad Daybell's five adult children, Garth, Emma, Seth, Lee, and Mark, spoke with 48 hours in their first interview since their father's case made the national news. Now, Chad's children say their father was framed and had nothing to do with the deaths of Joshua JJ and Tylee Ryan. Chad's children have remained relatively quiet over the past 18 months, but Murray, Garth, and Seth attended their father's arraignment back on June 9th of this year. They wore masks and sat behind Daybell as he pled not guilty to multiple felony charges, including first-degree murder. Prosecutors are now seeking the death penalty in this case. When asked, how is it possible two children are found buried in your father's backyard and he had nothing to do with it. Emma responded, he was framed. Now, Chad Daybell has recently waived his right to a speedy trial, so that trial that was supposed to start in early November is not going to take place. A hearing was scheduled for today, Monday, August 30th, but that hearing has been sealed by the judge, Stephen Boyce, and it won't be open to the public. Daybell's next court appearance then is scheduled for a change of venue hearing, which is now set for October 5th and 6th. Now, the 48 Hours episode, The Secrets of Chad Daybell's Backyard, airs Wednesday, September 1st at 9 p.m. Mountain Time. We'll certainly be watching. Now, from the teaser information that came out, there's no indication if they speak as to who may be responsible for the death of their mother, Tammy Daybell. We'll definitely want to watch and see if that subject matter is brought up. Yesterday, it was revealed that Chad's children believe that he was framed for the death of J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. And many people asked, well, what do the children have to say about Tammy? Well, J.J. and Tylee's mother, Lori Vallow, married Chad Daybell in November of 2019, weeks after Chad's first wife, Tammy Daybell, died in her Salem home. So Chad Daybell's adult children, Garth Daybell, Emma Murray, Seth Daybell, Leah Murphy, and Mark Daybell sat down with 48 hours for their special that they're airing this week called The Secret of Chad Daybell's Backyard. Well, the children say that the authorities told them that their mother died from asphyxiation. And even though things look funny, in their own words, they are absolutely convinced that their father is innocent. So after Tammy Daybell's death in her Salem home in October of 2019, an autopsy was not performed and her body was later exhumed two months later. Authorities have not officially released the cause of death but multiple sources close to the investigation have said that she has died of asphyxiation. And according to Mark Daybell, asphyxiation doesn't necessarily mean smothered. According to his understanding, it just means the breath was interrupted. Yes, that's what it means. Your breath is interrupted when you have died of asphyxiation. And in the end, according to her son, she wasn't able to breathe. The children also say that Tammy had been in failing health. The children further describe that on the night of her death, the children say, Chad, their father was pacing back and forth saying, why? How could this have happened? She can't be dead. Like, how could this be? What do we do? Emma chimes in and says that because her father was in complete shock, the children were the ones that requested that there be no autopsy. Now, Emma Murray, his daughter, defended her father, saying that if he were to commit a crime, he wouldn't be foolish enough to put the evidence in his own backyard. We presume innocence in this country just because things look funny. We don't send people to jail. I have said this myself 
one of the defenses that Chad DeBell is more than likely going to have to raise is that someone like, oh, I don't know, Alex Cox was the one who actually killed the children. And why would he be so stupid enough to actually put the bodies on his property? We'll see if a jury will believe that story. So the 48 Hours episode, The Secret of Chad Day Bell's Backyard, it's going to air Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Mountain Time. We're certainly going to be watching to see what else the uh, family has to say about uh, their dad's innocence. Aiden Fucci, he's playing games. Now, if you may recall, Aiden Fucci is being charged as an adult for the murder in the violent stabbing of 13-year-old classmate Tristan Bailey. His pretrial hearing was scheduled for this morning, but was postponed to October 28th due to some technical difficulties. During the pretrial hearing this morning, Aiden Fucci was seen on screen for about 20 seconds wearing his uh, orange jumpsuit and had a confused expression on his face. Fucci was led into a room with a phone so that he could hear the court proceedings and appeared to be frightened. He looked around the room with a confused and dazed expression. A deputy came into the room, took the phone receiver off the wall and handed it to the young Mr. Fucci, who then flipped his long hair back and continued looking disoriented as he held the receiver to his ear. He then started rocking back and forth in his seat. He could be heard on the video recording saying, please don't let the demons take my soul. The demons are going to take my soul away. The demons steal my soul. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What the hell is going on? Why am, why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? He asks multiple times what's going on, why is he here, and that he just wants to talk to his mom and dad. Well, Fucci's lawyers requested and filed a waiver of speedy trial, and the next court date is now set for late October. Ladies and gentlemen, young Aiden Fucci is playing games. His attorneys, if they believe that he had mental health issues or was not competent to proceed, they would have had an ethical duty to raise that issue. Based upon what went down this morning, it was clear that the attorneys were somewhat surprised as well and that he is playing games. What, does he think that somehow he's going to be found not competent and the case is just going to go away? No, the mental health professionals can spot malingering a mile away, just as this little old street lawyer can as well. I've said this before, it's always the crazy ones that don't want to go to the mental health hospital. It's always the malingerers that are trying to get there. I think Aiden Fucci is trying to get there. Aiden Fucci's mother, who's also facing charges in regards to covering up uh, the murder that her son is accused of by basically washing his clothes, her court appearance was also continued as well. Please go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up for a background subscription service. You'll be happy you did. If there's anyone out there you were ever curious about what was in their background, now is the time to do it. If you're going to get involved with somebody, now is the time to do it. When you go to crimetalksearch.com, you put in the name, literally millions of public records are searched and a report is generated. And it's going to give you a report. If they have multiple social media accounts, you're going to find it. If they have multiple phone numbers, multiple email addresses, it's going to be found. And more importantly, you're going to get information regarding criminal history. Hopefully the person you're searching has none whatsoever, but if it's there, it's going to be found. You're going to get everything you'd want to know, whether you're going into business or whether you're going into a personal relationship, you're going to be able to find out the information you want to know. So go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up today. You'll be happy you did. Chad DeBell's family speaks out. Well, Chad DeBell's five adult children spoke for the first time in an interview that aired last night on 48 Hours. 
We already knew from the previews that Chad's children believed that Chad was framed and they believed Tammy Daybell died of asphyxiation. Now, the first third of the episode was a good recap of everything that had gone down with the Vallo Daybell matter. The CBS reporter asked the children some pretty good questions, things that we've all been dying to know the answers to. First, how did you process Lori and Chad's marriage? To which the children replied that they were shocked and confused. They do believe that Chad had an emotional affair with Lori while Tammy was still alive, but don't believe Chad would be capable of having a physical affair because of their strong religious beliefs. And then the reporter asked the five children if they think Chad had anything to do with the death of his wife, Tammy DeBell, their mother, their mother, to which all five children said they never questioned whether or not Chad killed Tammy. They know he would not be capable and that he loved her very much. The children were then asked if they knew that Lori had two children when their father married her. Garth said that he did not know about JJ or Tylee until investigators showed up at his work asking him questions about their disappearance. Hmm, that's interesting. Chad's daughter, Emma, had the most speaking time in the episode of all the children. She recounts the moment where Chad is being arrested and put in a police car. She said that Chad asked Emma, do you know why they are arresting me? Emma said, dad, they found human remains. Emma then said his eyes got wide faced, pale, and he looked shocked. I wonder if she's listened to that audio recording. Well, the reporter then asked the children if they ever questioned their father about JJ and Ty Lee when there was a nationwide search for the children. Chad's children said they had, and that Chad's only response was that he could not tell them because he was keeping JJ and Ty Lee safe. Oh my gosh, how is that for incriminating? He's keeping them safe? Oh boy, now the kids are more than likely going to be witnesses against their dad. In regards to the infamous shooting of the raccoon and the text messages that Chad had sent to Tammy on the day in question, Tylee went missing. Garth sticks up for his father and says that they had a raccoon problem for some time and that the traps they were using were too small. So they were starting to shoot the raccoons instead. Now the reporter reminds the kids that, hey, the investigators never found a raccoon in the search of the pet cemetery. Emma says that there were are actually two pet cemeteries and that the other one was never searched. I guess they're gonna go back. Chad's children did say that they got death threats on Facebook because of all of everything that's happening with their father. And they want to remind people that neither they nor their father were involved with the deaths of JJ and Ty Lee, and that they do feel bad that Ty Lee and JJ are now deceased. Emma continued to say that she is confident that Alex and Lori framed Chad and that Alex would come over to their house, often unannounced, and no one knew what he was doing. When asked by the children at the end, how could Chad be surrounded by such evil and not know it, to which the children responded, he was fooled. Chad was being labeled as a cult leader and the children say that, well, if he was a cult leader, wouldn't he have started with his own children? The episode asks at the end, basically, who do you think was the mastermind? Chad, the cult leader who pulled the strings on the sidelines or was it Lori, the beautiful blonde black widow who used her sex appeal to get people to do her dirty work? A couple things that jump out at me in this interview are the fact that Chad DeBell has made statements that are admissions. They can be used against him. And the children, if they weren't already witnesses, will now be based upon that statement that he was keeping JJ and Tylee safe. The other thing I told you from a defense attorney perspective, the thing that they're gonna have to do is pin it on Lori for Chad to walk, which I think is getting much more difficult as time goes by. Chad is gonna have to run a defense of he's duped. And I'm sure the children have talked to the attorney and that's the gist of their defense. We'll see if it holds up in front of a jury.